If you've been using an external USB drive for your Time Machine backups, or if this is your first time ever setting Time Machine up on your Mac, you need to watch this video. In a nutshell, Time Machine is Apple's proprietary backup method to be able to shadow your entire machine. Essentially, it creates a exact backup of your machine or an exact snapshot, if you will, and you can use this snapshot and move it to another machine. So if you lose your laptop or you move to another device, you can pretty much replicate everything that you had on your old machine. It's like you're picking up where you left off. You don't have to reconfigure any apps or settings. The advantage of moving your Time Machine backups from a USB to a NAS or a network attached storage is that you can be completely autonomous when it comes to backing up. You don't have to touch it, it'll just do it in the background. This means not having to plug in your external drive every time you need to run a backup. A NAS drive or a network drive will automatically back up regardless of where you are in the home, as long as you're connected to the home network. The drive I'll be setting up with you today is the Synology NAS drive. And you can follow these instructions right to the T with any Synology NAS drive. That being said, most recent NAS drives today have the ability to create time machine backups and to be seen by Mac's proprietary time machine software. This is regardless of brand. As long as you just follow the settings, you should be able to set this up with any other NAS drive that supports Time Machine backups. And if you wanna pick up this specific drive that I'm gonna be talking about today, you can find some links in the description down below. I'll get you an amazing price on Amazon. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here is we're gonna to wanna to go into the Synology control panel. And in here, you'll want to go to the shared folder section. You probably already have something set up in here. Uh, I do already, I have like a, a shared drive that's already there. But what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to create a brand new folder for the time machine backup that we wanna create. Or uh, I guess you can call it a brand new mounting point. So here I'm just gonna put the name and the description of what this is. And of course, I'm just gonna select the location that I want this Time Machine backup to be in. Here I'm just gonna just choose the default volume that I have. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that hide this shared folder is not checked, as well as hiding all subfolders because you want your Time Machine uh, program to be able to find the backup. Now this is an important one. You want to make sure that enable recycle bin is unchecked because Synology actually recommends that you don't have this checked when you're creating this time machine backup. And also you want to make sure uh, that the encrypted shared folders option on the next screen is also unchecked. So you don't want to encrypt this folder. Uh, you want it to just do a straight time machine backup. So here you're going to click next. Once you click next, um, you'll just wanna confirm some of the settings, just make sure that everything's good and everything looks great. Here we go. And now in this screen, you're gonna configure the user permissions. If you don't have a user set up already, you don't have to worry about this part right now. I'm just gonna add m myself as well as my wife um, to the read write uh, capabilities here, but you wanna create a brand new user for uh, the time machine backup that you're gonna create. And I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Okay, over here is the user and group section. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to create a brand new user for this Time Machine backup. The reason you wanna do this is because you want to have Time Machine as its own separate user so that it backs up, it has the proper permissions just to access that Time Machine share. You don't wanna have, um, say, a random user in your household. You don't wanna log in to Time Machine as another user uh, that uses other things and other resources on your network. This just keeps it clean and simple, and it's very easy to do. There's no reason why you can't create just a separate user for this. And it's also recommended by Synology themselves. Now here you can see I have the admin, a guest, and uh, two other users on this drive. But I'm gonna create a Time Machine user here. Now you can name this whatever you want, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna call it Time Machine just to make things simple. And then you can put a description if you want to. Obviously this will just be a, the user for the Time Machine. And the password, based on how you have it set up, uh, you can create the password to be as complex as you like or even as simple as you like, depending on your requirements. So I'm just gonna create a quick, simple password for this user. Now once that's set, you'll click on Next. Now here, it's just asking you to add this user to a specific group. Uh, obviously, it'll just be in the default users group, so we don't have to worry about that. You can click on Next. Here's why um, I mentioned earlier that you wanna have a separate user. You just want to have this Time Machine user access the Time Machine backup itself. So you'll give it read-write permissions and then click Next. 
and then you'll set a quota for how big you want this time machine backup to be. And that's up to you, that's based on how much storage you have. Uh, for me, I have a one terabyte drive on this MacBook, so I'm just gonna create it as two terabytes just to be on the safe side. And if I wanna create other backups or I have other things that are there. Here you wanna enable this user to have uh, specific application permissions. The ones that you wanna select here are AFP and SMB. So you wanna give this user um, allow permissions for AFP, and then you wanna also allow it to access SMB. Those are the only two that you really need for this specific user. And then this you can obviously skip. You don't have to worry about setting user speed limits because none of this applies to the time machine user itself. You can click on next here. And of course, we're just gonna confirm all of the settings, make sure that everything's good, right as rain. And that is that for creating the user. Now, depending on what version of the Synology software that you have, um, this will vary a little bit. With DSM 7.0 and above, uh, you'll go to Control Panel, Users and Groups, and then User, and then Create. If it's 6.2 and below, you'll wanna go to Control Panel, uh, User, and Create. So it's a little bit different, but um, not too complicating there. And just as a side note, you can actually scroll down and check what version of the software that you're running on your uh, current server for Synology is. Here I'm running DSM 7.1, so everything that I'm talking about today will be in the 7.1 and above. If you do have 6.2 and below, it'll be a little bit different, but again, not too complicating. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the file services section here. And then we're going to set up a couple things here. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to enable is the SMB settings. You wanna make sure that SMB services is enabled. And then next you wanna make sure that enable AFP services are also checked. And then lastly, we're gonna go into advanced here. We're gonna enable the Bonjour service discovery. So uh, make sure that that is checked. That is an Apple exclusive, I don't know, it's a service that Apple has and it's um, a proprietary service that Apple uses to run uh, their software. So you want to enable that and then also enable the Bonjour Time Machine uh, broadcast via the um, AFP service. So this, you want to just set the Time Machine folder and we'll select that folder that we created earlier. And you'll wanna go ahead and save that. Make sure all the other settings are, are not pertinent so you don't have to worry about that. You can just click on apply over there. All right, so we're at the home stretch here. Now we can set up this backup. Let's go into system preferences and then go to time machine. Here you're gonna set up that time machine backup. And when I check backup automatically, you can see here that the time machine network drive is showing up. If you didn't set up the stuff that we talked about before, you're not gonna see that for this NAS drive. You have to set up those services so that the time machine backup can see it. And that being said, you wanna actually click on backup automatically and this will actually be truly automated because you never have to mount the network drive. It'll always be mounted whenever you're at home. So it'll automatically back up at night. You don't have to plug anything in, like your external drives. It'll just do its thing and you won't have to worry about it. It'll be completely transparent. So let's click on that Time Machine folder that we created here. And we're going to say Use Disk. Once it does that, it'll ask you to connect. And this is where you will type in the user information that we set up. So I'm just gonna enter in that Time Machine uh, user and then the password. And here we are. So it's just doing its thing and we're pretty much good to go. It's going to look at that disk and then it will create a time machine icon for that disk as well too. So as you can see here, it started backing up and we now see that time machine disk here on our desktop, which is great. Um, it looks like just a normal time machine drive. And now you won't have to worry about these backups moving forward. It'll just automatically uh, back up the time machine, regardless of where you are in your house. And that's the beauty of it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions regarding the process that we went through, or if you're having some issues setting this up, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to help you any way I can. What's your current setup for backing up data on Mac or Windows? Do you use Time Machine? Do you do manual backups? I'd love to know. Thanks for watching this video. I'm gonna have more videos like this in the near future, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like always, I'm Jared the Tech Avenger. Don't forget, when it comes to tech, the Tech Avengers are there. We got your back. Thank <laughs> you.